I've turned off my Ahora, sonido. Sí, ¿no? Okay. Creo que ya podemos empezar. Eh, bueno, Eguardión, Bustioi. Hola a todos. Eh, hi. Hi. Eh, muchas gracias por estar aquí. Eh, bueno, una de las cosas que yo no tenía clara es de cuánta gente iba a ver hoy, pero, pero bueno, eh, bastante más de lo habitual, con lo cual, bueno, <risa> vamos a ver. Eh, bueno, primero, muchas gracias a San Telmo, como, como suelo decir, a Izaskun, que está por aquí, aunque de baja, pero bueno, por permitir esto, hacer posible eh, esta cosa que era un poco, bueno, por lo menos para mí, eh, improbable y loca, que es tener aquí a, a Raymond Mix, me, si me conocéis un poco, sabéis la lata que os he dado con esto, que suelo dar. Entonces, eh, bueno, eh, hoy es un día un poco distinto, como veis. Primero, eh, bueno, eh, creo que es simbólico que no tenemos máscara. Eh, ¿no? Hemos estado mucho tiempo con mascarilla, hoy no tenemos máscara. Y hoy eh, Rey ha escogido esta configuración. O sea, no tenemos la mesa, ¿no? los micrófonos habituales, entonces hay que hacer un poco todo esto nuevo. ¿no? Eh, la idea es estar más cerca, ¿no? eh, más cerca de vosotros, que no haya esta diferencia un poco eh, que suele haber ¿no? de altura y demás. Eh, con lo cual quiero decir que no hay parapetos también, ¿no? eh, por lo menos yo lo siento así, estamos aquí todo más cerca, es un poco esta, esta novedad de hoy. Eh, bueno... Solo empiezo eh, muy brevemente, eh, si no le conocéis o, o le conocéis poco, digamos, que eh, es verdad que es un trabajo que no es igual tan conocido ¿no? del público en general. Eh, bueno, Raymond Mix eh, es un eh, autor eh, norteamericano, eh, nacido en 63 en Ohio, y digo Ohio, eh, estará cansado de, de oírlo, porque no es lo mismo, por lo menos, no sé, eh, y sobre todo en su obra, ¿no? que veremos eh, enseguida, no es lo mismo nacer en Ohio que en San Francisco, Nueva York o en Donosti. ¿no? Eh, y, y bueno, esto lo digo porque bueno, luego tiene una larga trayectoria él ya de publicaciones, sobre todo en lo que eh, bueno, atañe a la colección. ¿no? Eh, hay bastantes libros de él en la colección. No todos, pero bueno, eh, intentamos. Eh, su fotografía eh, nos habla mucho del, del lugar, ¿no? del espacio, de la memoria del lugar, eh, de la ausencia o de estar lejos de ese lugar y de lo que eso significa. Entonces, por eso digo que eh, Ohio, eh, we are far from Ohio. Estamos lejos de Ohio, pero eh, al final es igual, ¿no? estar un poquito más lejos o... ¿no? Pero ese sentido de, del espacio y del lugar es de, de lo que él habla mucho en su fotografía ¿no? y de la pertenencia a un lugar. Eh, esa es mi presentación. Ray, thank you for being here. Because, uh, 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 I know maybe it's not very well easy or I don't know. I hope it's easy. Perdonar si hablo inglés de vez en cuando. Yo bueno voy a hacer esto, ¿no? Eh, yeah. Well, that was the uh, easiest introduction I've ever had because normally in the <laughs> introduction you hear somebody talking about your life, your history, and your formative years, and it's just like, wow, that's somebody else's life, that's not mine. But it was, it was nice to hear, to not be able to understand, but trust it. I mean, I have no idea what you just said, but it <laughs> sounded lovely in Spanish. <laughs> I, had, I had a few notes, but uh, I never look at my notes. Yeah, things, so. I'm sure I'll... <laughs> People. Um, so, uh, Gabrielle and I haven't really created a polished presentation. We're, we're, uh, we had a conversation on the drive over here, and we'll probably just continue that conversation as we look at pictures today. Um, and in terms of the presentation, um, there's the order of the, the work I'm going to show is mostly in book form. The book Half Story, Half Life, and uh, Supreme Honey Cathedral. Um, there is no, I'm sort of working backwards, but I'm not working in any sort of linear way. And um, throughout 
a series of pictures. There'll be occasional places where we'll stop and I'll read a few lines of text which are primarily, it's sort of the guiding philosophy that I was keeping track of while I was doing the work. So as I work and the work starts to communicate back to me, I start to write down uh, key phrases that are key thoughts or ways of starting to understand what the work is and to constrain the work a little bit so it doesn't become too vast and broad. Um, so I'll stop and try to read those slowly so that the interpreters can follow along. Um, should I start? Is your translation working? I don't no, know. No, I mean, si hablo español, me oyes en inglés? In English? Si hablo... do, you, do you hear me in English, the no. translator? No. No. Uh, Which is the... good, I don't want to. Oh. <laughs> But maybe um, if some people will ask you in Spanish, you should. Uh, maybe we have to, to press uh, some button, yes. A ver. Is it working? Just, <laughs> La tecnología y yo somos. Uh, okay. Yeah. Wow. This is so high tech. Oh, another. No hay que. Yo me tengo que poner más cosas o no? <laughs> Con esto yo ya voy servida, I think, eh, pero bueno. I think I'll wait. Wow, I okay. think I'm going to wait till there's questions for, for yeah, this. Because okay. wow. I won't be able to hear myself. Sí. Okay, you have to, you cannot free. We cannot. If you want, hear me in translation. I will try to speak to you okay. in English, but... Uh, great, great. Yeah. Perdona. Thank you. Bueno, bien. Thank you. Um, okay. okay, you're in charge. Yeah, no, it's, Um, do I? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Vamos a empezar a poner las... So the, uh, Esto va a ser así, eh? perdonar, pero... <laughs> We are clearly not polished up here. No. Um, so this is the first body of work uh, became a book which shows commune and it's titled Half Story, Half Life. And these pictures were, were made... Um, can you hear okay? No yeah. funciona. Sí, yo creo que hay, hay que apretar en algún sitio a Maya. Yeah, thumbs up. Sometimes it okay, not. good. Okay, yes. Okay, so you're going to go, okay. Um, so these were made uh, over the span of about four years in upstate New York, walking distance from my home. Um, okay. this, this quote at the beginning here is from C.D. Wright. It's sort of to set up the book. Uh, if you could just say, I feel lost here and I'm going home. For where on earth would you buy that ticket? Who would meet you when you got there? By what sign would they know you? And so this phrase is really just kind of meant to point you in the direction of understanding that this is about the discovery of the self, essentially. Um, but this work, this work um, was made within walking distance of the place I lived, which most of my work is made in my backyard or within walking distance of where I live. Um, and was really just drawn to this place um, by accident. And uh, can you all see this okay? Yeah. yeah. Would it help if the lights were dimmer up here? Yeah. Podemos bajar un poco las luces? It would help me. Bajar las luces, por favor. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Okay. Un poco más. Are we good? Okay. Okay. Yes. Um, yes. And so, you know, being here and, and coming to this place and seeing these young men, the, the book is primarily, it's, it's, it, we're setting up place, we're setting up environment, but The book is primarily focused on the activity of cliff jumping by young teenage men and women. <clears throat> and primarily there, when I'm there, uh, the first time was purely responding to the light and form, these, these young bodies jumping from cliffs, um, backlit and with, the, like this, with this dark, opaque background behind them, just really responding to just the beautiful location and these bodies jumping without understanding like what it is specifically I'm drawn to here. Um, 
after time of photographing two or three years, what I started to understand about my interest in this place, um, if you go to the next one, I'm going to read this. Um, so this is one of the constraints that I have, a communicated sense of stillness infused with vibrancy, a quality I find in March, much of the art I love, that I'm being restored, set upright, reminded of a frequency I need to tune myself to as if something has been consolidated, only briefly, but then to realize, oh, and to hover there. So there was also something about these bodies as they jump from a cliff where like, just to that point where gravity started to take their body and they started to fall, they sort of hovered there for a moment. And it just felt like so much of the precipice where they were also in their lives. Um, I, have a, I have a son who, at the time I was making these pictures, was of a similar age. And so it was also like being met with um, just the trepidation of like putting, putting a son into the world. Like, have I given him all of the tools he needs to go out into the world and function as a young man? Mm -hmm. Which then brought up the question of what is a young man? What is masculinity? <clears throat> um, and for me in particular, like I've always struggled with masculinity. It's always been... I was raised with two sisters on both sides, an older sister and a younger sister. And so like, I was raised mostly among women, grandmother, mother, and was more comfortable around women and played sports, played team sports, understood like camaraderie, understood what it was to be amongst men. But I always felt a little bit separate from, from men in that way. Like I didn't really feel like I'm, I felt like I had as much of a, like a feminine side as I had a masculine side. I could be masculine when I had to be, I could, but I also was more comfortable around women than I was men. So for me, like coming to this place where young men, you know, come and they're all like, there's almost a procession that happens like, like, at, a, like at a catwalk kind of thing where they like come out and they kind of strut and they kind of show themselves. And then they jump from these cliffs and it was a way also for me of like trying to understand that setting where men test themselves against other men and like, a, and like a group of men essentially raise a young man to become a young man. And so this, this work at, at a certain point became as much about that, about trying to understand what American masculinity was in a rural part of America. And maybe try to understand where like that whole procession missed me. Like, why didn't I get that? Because I always felt uncomfortable in the presence mm -hmm. of a large group of men, you know? Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> much more comfortable around women than I am men. Uh, you, you talk, sorry, I talk. Yeah. Uh, American masculinity, mm -hmm. uh, this could very well be here. I mean, mm, same. It's uh, some kind of universal. Yeah. Um, so, um, sometimes I've heard you talking that you were uh, really well, an American. Everybody thought you were an American, but your photography, uh, despite some well, some landscapes, mm -hmm. it's completely universal too. Yeah, um, yeah, so. yeah. I mean, that's the so, aim yeah. is to make something that mm -hmm. exceeds your little corner of the world. You know, that mm -hmm. can make contact halfway around the world too. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I've interrupted you and um, No, that's okay. Lost, uh, Wait, did I miss a field of text? No, it's coming up. Yeah, uh, yes, there was yeah so the, initially this body of work, um, you know, they're all the, there are these exalted figures of young men leaping off cliffs and they're these really beautiful gestures. But the ones that I ultimately ended up referring to and bringing into the book were the ones where you felt failure, where you felt flaw, where you felt like you weren't sure what the outcome was going to be. It was less of an exaltation and more of an off balance feeling like this is not going to land well. <laughs> um, in fact, I, after the second or second year there, some of the teams insisted if I were going to keep coming there to photograph, I needed to jump also. And the cliffs are uh, let's see, meters, probably 15 meters uh, of a jump mm -hmm. from a cliff. Um, so I had to, I had to do it in order for them to allow me to keep photographing them. 
and uh, I did it, but it was not pretty. It was, it was one of these failures. Oh. Yeah. So this, yeah, this text, this is more of like thoughts constraining this book. Mm -hmm. The whole idea of American masculinity, the whole infantile idea, to be a man is much more various than American myth would have it. It's signaled by the depth of extent to which you can accept the dangers and power and beauty of love. And then I wrote, uh, came to experience the activities at Furlong. This Furlong was the place, the name of the place where I was photographing. As nearly sacramental, stone altar, bodies rising and offering, we shelter our boys from the world's transgressions until a certain age of adolescence where they begin to conspire with other young men in this ritual of becoming a man. We then have the weight of our ills, prepare them for battle, for fatherhood. And then the final thought I had at this point was shared space and joined experience. They are also people in and of themselves, contemplation of what it is to be young and male in a small corner of rural America. Common elements that glue us together, friendships bounding ability to hold and tack our emotions and our graceless moments together, a solace that can only be found in proximity to one another. Yeah, so it felt equally important to sort of anchor this place in that part of rural America. So the pictures at the beginning of the book were meant to do that, were meant to say like, this is, uh, I mean, there's still white young men, so there's still a sense of privilege that is attached to them, especially in the world we live in now, because, mm -hmm. but, um, but it was also important for me to say that, yes, they are white young men for the most part, but privilege is not something that I would say that was theirs, you know, they were still uh, in a rural, poor part of, no. of America. Mm -hmm. um, you said something maybe, there was a military camp near or not? Yeah, West yeah. Point. West Point. Oh, West Point, no. which is uh, the mm -hmm. Army mm -hmm. College, the Army School, West Point mm -hmm. Academy uh, is nearby. But most of the young men I photographed that are in this book were men that were coming here every day. On the weekends, the West Point and people from all over the state were coming there, but on the weekdays, it was just, it was the locals that kept coming, and those are the ones I, mm -hmm. I primarily photographed. Mm -hmm. You all can ask yeah. questions, too, as we go along. If you have specific questions, yes. just... Uh, oh, yes. Mirel, uh, we need the microphone. Do I need to put this on? Yes, maybe, yes. In fact, um, I should need something to hear, but I don't have it, so I'm going to pass the microphone. Buenos días. Buenos días. Este libro que es extraordinario. No, no sé si funciona. Sí, yo creo que funciona. Ahora sí. En este libro que es extraordinario, es un libro fantástico. The microphone's not on. Yo, yo recuerdo leer un tiempo después una crítica en American Sur X que me extrañó mucho y que me permito recordar precisamente porque acaba de sacar usted el tema a colación. Y es que en aquella crítica se hablaba de la falta de personas de color en las imágenes que usted tomó. Y me gustaría saber, usted seguro que leyó aquella crítica, ¿qué piensa de ella? Bueno, well, I, I, you know, this, this place in rural New York, there weren't a lot of black men there, so... You know, I was representing the place as much as the individuals, um, and I didn't want to. I didn't want to make an effort to include African American race just because, for the sake of representation, you know, no. that would have felt false to me. Um, the other, the other um, criticism I sometimes hear is that you know, there are, why are these all men? Where are the women? You know. Um, 
and there is, as you'll see later on in the book, mm -hmm. um, there is one picture of women, young women, but for the most part, um, I tried photographing young women, but I, you know, being there every day, a 50 something year old man with a camera by himself uh, became, started to feel pretty awkward photographing young women and the discomfort that I was feeling, they were picking up on. And then that would, so I, there was this back and forth of discomfort that would go, like I would just, and the pictures never worked. Uh, for that reason. And ultimately, you know, like also the, the reason I didn't want to try, I mean, to photograph black men or women is because ultimately I think that the more you try to be broad in general and inclusive, like you try to cover every aspect of not, not the place, but of culture. In this case, it would water it down. It would become less potent as a as a book, so I prefer something that feels tight in terms of in terms of showing you a place. Like I prefer something that feels really contained and doesn't become too doesn't spill over and try to become too much, you know. So like it felt more important to make it more contained, more simple, to go deeper <laughs> into a certain place than to try to like create something that was broad and, inc and more inclusive in this case of this work. The work I'm doing here now in France might be different, but th for this work in particular, I felt like, keep it, keep it yeah. concise. Yeah. yeah. The, vertical, the vertical search that you talk mm -hmm. about, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay, yeah, this okay. is the lone picture of, of women. And I felt it was important to have that one picture in the book because just to acknowledge the absence of women in the book, just to say that, you know, they are there, women are there. Um, and I felt like it, I felt like to have one picture would also, would also make the absence of women um, yeah. more, more explicit. You know, you would know that like there aren't women in the book when you see one, it's like, oh wow, there's, this is the only one, you know. Um, mm -hmm. so, but to acknowledge that there were, there were women there and that it was a choice not to have them. Not important. Okay, I've been passing a lot of pictures just to arrive at this one. Shall I continue at this point? Yeah. Okay. So the, this piece of text, I don't know if I should read it or not, but um, in the, on the back of this book and on the back of Cyprian, or on the front of Cyprian Hanna Cathedral, um, I work with these text collages, which are essentially trying to create a portrait of the place, the people, like the, uh, the energy that's there. And so I take all of these words that represent all of the different elements of the people and the place and common phrases that I would hear when I was there. And I create this like, just this uh, montage of words that are meant to almost become like a portrait. And uh, it's compressed, like the whole piece is compressed, like, a, like almost like a poem, like a free associative poem. Um, but it's also meant to sort of uh, point to the way like time collapses when you use memory. You use memory to recall something and you, you know, they're like, you only remember the key things. Everything else kind of falls away and this whole thing collapses. And so, um, so this was a piece that I wrote that reads, uh, I'll just read it out loud. Um, Natural born, acne faced prophecy, drawn from limestone altar, send it falling like wet leaves, marking time, advent vapors give rise to prayer. I hope you make it in the Genesis pipe dream, dripping temples of life, mystery of my little hometown, make America great again, wonderful lies being whispered in damp ears, running mascara, snap of bras popping, tortured by soft skin, limp, blue balled, walk home, tragic unknowability of women, hit me and felt like a kiss, moments of unwoven bliss, three second orgasm, one Mississippi, two silent gods of Olympus, we gotta get out of this place, three Mississippi, four, Catskill, chill, scorched, burning ass truth, emanating from sweat, would you take another chance on me, goodbye to you, I hope you make it. So it's 
but it is strictly a, a you know this is american vernacular you know like mm -hmm. uh hit me and felt like a kiss we got to get out of this place is you know a famous song from the animals um mm -hmm. so it's it's very much set in american vernacular um this piece of text this text isn't in the book it's no. on the back of the book it's on the back yeah of half story, a half life. Mm -hmm. oh. We should have, we should have. Uh, no hemos traído los libros que estaban en la biblioteca, pero bueno, hemos traído aquí algunos, pero eh, no me acordaba que estaba este libro. Siempre hay que releer los libros. Uh, there's always in your picture something that I like very much. There's the, well, you like poetry, it's obvious. Mm -hmm. And this, uh, I mean, this butterfly is just there. Mm -hmm. There is this poetry, uh, mm -hmm. th this balance uh, I mean, in the landscape. I mean, these leaves that we have seen just there. Yeah. Yeah. These so delicate and uh, delicate. Exactly. Yeah. Seems. I mean, these yeah, yeah. these moths were on my window at night yeah. in the house where I was living, and I was just photographing them against the window. They were attracted to the light, but yeah, there was something winged and delicate about them mm -hmm. and just wanting to go back and reference nature also you know mm -hmm. these same parallels that are happening that are, these young men and women are encountering in the world of course happen in the natural world too this aspect of some kind of, uh, I don't know, religious ritual. I mean, mm -hmm. It's, it's well, obvious here, of course, yes. Yeah. Yes. yeah, I grew up, I grew up, I was raised Catholic and, um, you know, we're always referencing our own, we're trying to like, when we're out in the world, we're, we're taking in the world, but then we have to sort of filter the world through our own experience. And my experience growing up Catholic was that it is, this is almost like a religious, like a sacrament almost, like these young men leaping from cliffs. And like we in church, in grade school, in Catholic grade school, we would have these offerings that we would write down an intention on a piece of paper and then we'd fold it up and then they would, we would give them, they would pass a basket around and the basket would go to the priest and they would burn these intentions at the altar. Mm -hmm. And that's sort of the way these young men like, cause you just know that like, what they're about to inherit in the world, especially, you know, the world today, like what are they going to inherit? And it felt, mm -hmm. it felt like a, that sort of ritual, like a sacramental ritual that jumping from these cliffs, this, this like offering um, that we, like, we offer up our children. So these are all just devices as a way of like, you know, making sense of what you're doing and trying to like contain it for a book. You know, they don't, mm -hmm. I don't describe any of this to anybody. Like, you don't have to see this in the work. It's just my way of organizing the work and giving it meaning. Yes. Um, this one in particular, yes. though, is very uh, religious with the arms out. A little, almost, yeah, too, and too much so. But. When you begin to work, I mean, you're not working on a project. You just take pictures, mm -hmm. yeah. and then it begins a project, or, or yeah. maybe the idea of a book. But uh, yeah, I've never, yeah, I've never really photographed a project. I mean, I've really never, I've never photographed towards a known subject. Where I like, I want to photograph. I want to do a book on, on. I don't know genetically modified <laughs> uh, crops. You know, I've never, I've never really done that. I really just, I make pictures in response to the place I live. And then ultimately uh, there comes a point where you have to, you have to somehow contain that work. It has to, you, you have to organize it and give it a title. And then at that point it becomes a project. You know, like when a publisher comes to you and says, we want to do a book, then it's like, okay, 
But a lot of it is just this back and forth between myself and the work. You're making work and the work starts to, you make prints and you look at the prints and you look at a collection of work and it starts to speak back to you. You don't know what you're doing every day you go out. You're just making pictures of what you find to be astonishing or beautiful or you're curious about or that confuses you. You make those pictures and you bring them back and they start to tell you like what it is you're interested in or what you're curious about and then you start you start shaping it, that becomes like, okay, now I kind of know what it's about. I always think of it as like, there's this constant source, this constant creative source that's kind of flowing beneath the earth and uh, mm -hmm. it's always going on and anybody at a certain point can like tap into that. And that source is providing like what the world wants or needs now, you know? Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. you often find like, two artists doing the same work halfway around the world, you know? And it's like, I think that's part of that. They're both tapping into that source at the same time, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, no, I've never really photographed towards a, like, with a project in mind, yeah. just mm -hmm. make pictures and, and then at some point, you either have to organize it and make a book of it or mm -hmm. yeah, you, have, you have a deadline of some kind, you know? And then you have to like bring it together. Mm -hmm. Yes, but maybe it's difficult to say, in this case, uh, how do I make a book? How is this project closed, uh, in a way? Mm -hmm. Because sometimes I feel that your photography is like a, a, a big circle. A circle, I mean, just uh, yeah. your life and uh, yeah. coming and going. But a half story, half life is maybe, I mean, a more closed project. It is sense. a little more closed project. The, mm -hmm. the next project that we're going to see um, is an ongoing thing that I'll be doing the rest of my life, but mm -hmm. this felt a little more closed and it became closed for me at the end. Like I, I had been going there for four years and I always park at the same place and get out and go down to this place. Mm -hmm. And uh, I went back on the fifth year, I got out of my car and I started walking down there and I realized I was done with the project. I just didn't couldn't see myself like that ritual part of it yeah. had sort of yeah. ended. I couldn't go there anymore. So at that point, it was time to find something else to photograph, you know. But yeah. I, I was also photographing other things while I was doing this project. It's always, I'm always like photographing mm -hmm. what's going on around me and the people that are coming and going. Yeah. So this is, that's the last yeah. picture. And then, um, yeah. okay. so, uh, as I'm doing this work, I am also had moved in with my partner at the time and her two daughters and lived with them for six months and then we found out we were going to have to move from the house that we were renting, <clears throat> which I knew, like, my partner and I are, <clears throat> we're, um, we're so similar, like, we always sort of, in this situation of moving, I sensed that, like, there was going to be a lot of uh, we're both like alpha, we've got a lot of conflict. And so I just thought like one way to like, to mitigate that would be to actually photograph while I'm, because then it's not just moving, I'm actually making something, I'm making work, I'm making pictures. And I'm also giving, getting an opportunity to watch, to kind of focus on like the beauty of her movements, like the way she moves and uses her body. Um, and that and just mm -hmm. like her physical form and it, it just turned out to be mm -hmm. uh, such a wonderful experience like it turned this experience of moving and 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 like it, we just both had she had we filled up two big cargo containers full of things to store and it, you know like it <laughs> it's just it's, it's such a difficult time to realize all the things that you've that you've carried with you through your life, all the things that you've maintained, and to be critical of it. And um, instead, it became sort of a really generous time, and it became also a generative time where I started making these pictures and realizing that, for starters, it could be a, a short, a small book. So I made an artist book mm -hmm. of this work that was called Cyprian Honey Cathedral, um, yes, we have, yeah. which we have oh, a copy of okay. the artist book here uh, that we can show you later on. Oh, yeah. um, oh. And, and it started me thinking about home and, and, and domesticity and why it is that we construct these homes to hold our things, to contain our things and, 
and what you know, and to build these walls to keep the outside world from coming in, and um, just a whole like uh, construct of home. You know, like what is it? What does it really need to do? And why do these things that we possess end up somehow possessing us? You know, when we have so much that it kind of takes over. You spend your life maintaining these things that you've brought into your home. Um, and I was in the process, personally, at that time of shedding a lot of that. I was getting rid of, I just had like a very minimal mm -hmm. amount of possessions and I still, mm -hmm. I'm, I've been shedding yeah. ever since. But Adriana, my partner, just, uh, she's not a hoarder, but she's, <laughs> she just, if there's a space, she'll fill it, you know, with, mm -hmm. with things, um, which are meaningful to her. And I don't discredit that at all. It's just, it's, it's, it's curious to me. I don't understand it. No. I'm attached to things, so maybe I can understand that. Yeah. 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 But were you packing in or packing uh, out? Packing. Mm. We were packing uh, to store. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, there's this uh, meaning of home mm -hmm. in your photography. That's very important. I mean, home in general, but also the the space, the the house. Yeah. The rooms are very important. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, something you know, and I, th I find it interesting. I mean, it, it appeals to me. It talks to me a lot. Yes, mm -hmm. I don't know. I pack a lot of things, you know. <laughs> mm -hmm. So maybe. Uh, yeah, it's sort of the mm -hmm. the next uh, slide. There's okay. a piece of text that I'll read. Um, so again, like with this project, it's starting to try to figure out. Okay, what does this work want to do? So uh, there's a, a, f a couple of phrases here. Our ability to measure and apportion time as a source of comfort, walls to contain our possessions and keep out that which we fear, faint discordances in the shady corner of the backyard, Sunday evening sadness. Um, and then I wrote, we're all bound up in a web of love and loss. We're naturally more interested in those private lives that are not publicly exhibited. Um, yeah, and the thing I realized was after uh, making this work for a while, I, I ended up going back to Ohio where I'm from and I went back to the childhood home that I hadn't seen. You know, my parents told me where it was and I went to the, the house, our first house, that, and I realized, oh my gosh, this is the house I've been photographing like for the yeah. last four years yeah. without knowing like what it draws you back to like photograph a certain aluminum sided house, single story, you know, small front yard, small backyard, like it's all rooted in <laughs> the history. So we were talking about nostalgia. Yes, nostalgia, yes. Um, the whole talk was supposed to be about nostalgia. I mean, we're getting so, there, yeah. yeah. We're getting there, yes, yes. Yeah. But nostalgia, <laughs> like in the Greek form, like nostos, yeah. which, is, which is to return home or homecoming and logos, which is uh, pain or an ache. So like, it's not so much we were talking like the distinction of like, it's not that I don't, that I would want to go back to a, to a different time. Like we have a lot of that in America now where like it seems half the population wants to go back to 1950 because they're, they, they're having trouble um, yeah, it was understanding. Always, always better in the old times, yes. Yeah. So it's not the kind, yes. But it's not that sort of nostalgia. It's the nostalgia of um, just wanting to understand where I came from, you know, and uh, what informed who I who I am? What, like, just trying to trace back certain certain events. There was, a, you know, a fair amount of uh, discomfort in my in my childhood too. So it's like wanting to go back and reconcile some of that. Um, mm -hmm. Trying to understand, you know, how I got to this place. Um, it's not intentional. It's not like I think, oh, I want to go back and like, mm -hmm. you know, it's just a it's just a genuine curiosity mm -hmm. to want to go back and. You have this uh, book, or not exactly book, called Carousel. It is about no, no also no. Well, yeah. it's going back or just. Yeah, and Carousel. Like, you, can, you, you keep coming back. Coming to back. Us, yeah. yeah, you mentioned circles, and <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. circles is just such a big part of of um, the way I work and organize. Like I, I, I refer to my process as like a dog staked to a leash. Like I. You know, certain photographers sort of fan out into the world, and for me, it's just always about rotating in the cycle and circle. And the carousel, mm -hmm. as a 
book concept is really meant to feel more like you could open a book and sort of attach the front and back cover and it would just be one continuous carousel, you know, almost like a slide projector carousel where yeah. you, you don't know where the beginning and end, end is. <laughs> So these are pictures from that from the artist book. Still, um, some of these would filter into uh, the publication I did with Mac that we're going to look at in a moment. Most of them didn't, however, uh, enter into that book. Because you have um, sometimes the same picture in. Well, it's a it's a, a, ne a ne never-ending book. It seems mm -hmm. a bit not. Yeah. I mean, yeah. This was called Stissing, um, how much the title you, the title we've seen, yeah. Uh, uh, this is, this was, well, no, I've just titled it Stissing Mountain Road Stissing for Mountain the Road, sake yeah. of this, but it was titled Cyprian Honey Cathedral. Yeah, but yes. And that, um, that title, Cyprian Honey Cathedral, um, I was out photographing, a family had moved out of their house, put all their possessions at the end of the driveway, and then they left, and then like, I don't know, months later, you'd been sitting out in the rain, and and sun and a lot of the, the wood veneer has started to peel on the dressers. And I started assembling these objects to photograph them on the back side of this dresser. Mm -hmm. And on the back side of the dresser, written upside down in crayon, was Cyprian mm -hmm. Honey Cathedral, which was such a strange title. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, and I, and I just thought like, that's, that's really kind of beautiful. And just the, like, the sound of it, the sound of Cyprian Honey Cathedral yes, to me was yes, like, yes. it didn't have to mean like anything, it, like the ambiguity of it I thought was really beautiful too. Um, but that ended up being the title for this book and for the book I did with Mac. But you know, when a title finds you like that, I mean, you have to use it. You can't, you know, like yeah, it's a yeah. gift. You can't like not use that as a title. Yeah. But, but again, I mean, the Cyprian Honey Cathedral as an artist book mm -hmm. is quite different from the Cyprian Honey Cathedral as uh, published yeah. by Mac. Yeah, very different. So, yes. Different yeah. pictures and like this is a handmade book, you know. Yeah. Uh, on repurposed paper. Yes, and I mean, the, the whole idea is, well, not exactly, but yes, there's it is a, different. Yeah. a very different, yes. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, um, along the way as I'm making this work, I'm also making artist books. I can read that if you oh, want yeah, the one. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Houses are full of drama. Shelter where you look out the window and see the world. A house where you'll die. A house is where you'll get divorced. A house is where you'll have your most sacred and profane experiences. It's lack that gives us inspiration. We don't create out of fullness. That's from Ray Bradbury. Art comforts the disturbed and disturbs the comfortable. Um, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> houses, maybe. Houses. Yeah. We'll continue talking about houses. Yeah. No. yeah. The, the difference, maybe, between the two Cyprian Honey cathedrals? Or? Yeah. No. Yeah, but we'll get, I'll, we'll yeah. get to it with this yeah. next. Uh, I like the houses. Are, houses are full of drama. Mm. I mean, this, all our dramas are inside the houses. I mean, I guess. Yeah. Well, not maybe all, but as we... Uh, Normal people, I mean, uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, you can feel that. Yeah, yeah. go ahead. I had a, um, so this is the back side of that dresser where you can mm -hmm. just faintly see part of Cyprian Honey Cathedral. Um, when I was growing up, I had a, I delivered newspapers. Um, yeah. Early in the morning on a bicycle, I would get on my bike. It was freezing cold and dark, and I'd go out and sling papers on people's porches. But every two weeks, I had to go house to house with my little ledger and collect the money for the newspaper. And mm -hmm. I would knock on the door and the door would open. And as soon as that door opened, like their whole lives came rushing onto the front porch to meet me. It was like, you could, mm -hmm. the smells of the house, what they were cooking or what they had had, you could tell by the smell, like do they live clean and orderly or is it chaos? You would hear sounds of screaming or sounds of joy. And like all those emotions of that house were like brewing inside there. And when they opened the door, it would come out onto the porch. And I would just, sometimes I would like collect the money. I would just walk away just like stunned at like what I just heard and saw and have to get back on my bike mm -hmm. and, you know, ride to the next house. But sometimes it just filled you with joy. You know, like you would hear laughter or the guy would come to the door and, you know, the mother would come to the door and the kids would come rushing up and there was joy. So it was like this 
constant like shifting of emotion from door to door. And I think a lot of that is also what makes me, as I drive around and looking at houses, it makes me start to observe like, is there joy here? Mm -hmm. Is there sadness here? You know, is, you, know mm -hmm. you, you, see, you see it all. Yeah, we got the idea of peeping, peeping inside the house or peeping out. Yeah. At, maybe in some way we have bit this feeling when we see a bit of Cyprian Honey Cathedral. Mm. We just feel that uh, maybe we are, yes, uh, mm -hmm. there is a, an intimacy that uh, uh, we make us, you make us uh, spectators, I mean the viewers, mm -hmm. but. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, I mean, it's, it requires mm -hmm. a level of vulnerability. Um, yeah. And we can keep going here, I think, Gabriella. Yeah. Um, uh, the way to be truly universal is to be particular, moment by moment, detail by detail, the vital expression of the inexpressible. Um, that was mostly a, to, a note to myself just to say, like, not to use too much metaphor, because metaphor can mm -hmm. sometimes get you into trouble because rather than saying specifically what you want to say, you rely on some sort of visual symbol that can be ambiguous and it doesn't. I would rather, like, try to be direct. Mm -hmm. over a series of pictures and, and like mm -hmm. just say what it is you want to say, observe it, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. uh, and then leave it to the viewer to decide, you know. This is a <laughs> picture of chaos. This is uh, really gorgeous for me, yes. <laughs> yeah, this is sort of me trying to organize work at the beginning, just trying to you understand. Call this, you call all these chaos? Organized chaos. Oh. Yeah. Ultimately, I can't. This isn't the way I look at work because it's I, you, it's hard to see a single picture. You only see like an amalgamation of pictures. You don't see like I have to work in a stack. You know, one picture uh -huh, at a time, uh -huh. not the whole thing. Can you tell us a bit more about editing or no? No. <laughs> um, well, the, the one thing that's like this process of like putting pictures up like this, I only put them up like this so I can take them back down, so I can put them back up, so I can take them down. Because there's a randomness to putting things together, but then that randomness starts to like, you start to see how these two pictures, which you would never think could communicate mm -hmm. something mm -hmm. together, they suddenly do something that defies expl explanation. Mm -hmm. they, they communicate something that's greater than the sum of each individual piece. So like together, they create a third thing. And that's the benefit of working in this way of like putting things up, having them next to each other, taking them down, just a random, a random placing of images that start to inform what they might communicate, you know, because we work, I work in a book forum, so two pages, you know, what's on the left, what's on the right. It's not like trying to combine pictures because the colors are similar or because, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, I mean, that's, they're, they're really, you're hoping for something transcendent to happen, you know, in between the expected, you know, something mm -hmm, that mm -hmm. surprises you. Like, I, you know, I had no idea these two pictures could yeah, communicate. It's not even, you can't even usually put it into words. It's just like they, they give you a feeling that, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, so sometimes, I mean, the, the first, or oh, general idea you had suddenly com completely changes and takes mm -hmm. you in a, another way. Uh, I hope so, yeah. I, mm -hmm. That's what I hope for. Okay. Um, so then, um, you know, this is still like trying to understand this work and trying to like um, go through mm -hmm. different versions of what this work might be. And at the same time, I'm photographing Holmes. I started photographing my partner, Adriana. Um, in the early mornings before she woke. Um, she was aware I was doing this, by the way, just sleeping through it. Um, uh, because I was really interested in, in understanding how it is that we sleep at night. And it, there's almost like an erasure that happens where you, you wake up in the morning and I got to feel like I got to really experience the true essence of who she was, not that one that's populated by all these identities, a mother, you know, a, a provider, a chauffeur, you know. <laughs> um, 
she got to be sort of who she was mm -hmm. without all of those things. And I got to see that. And then, you know, you get up and all of a sudden you start repopulating your identity with mother chauffeur. And you start mm -hmm. like taking on all these different roles. And then you kind of lose that person that you tr or truly are. So this was a way of sort of observing her in the morning before, before um, all you know, of that. Um, I know some people who really think that it's not the best, um, uh, I don't know, the, the best way to show a woman mm -hmm. just sleeping. And <laughs> yeah, um, um, it's true. I don't want to be <laughs> delicate, but... Um, Why would they say that, though? Because they like the idea of a more active woman. I mean, mm -hmm. Yeah. But it talks about something else, but mm -hmm. there's this... Uh, there's this idea that maybe... Yeah, I, in, the, in the pairing of these two pictures, though, what I was trying to reference were these two worlds. You know, there's a mm -hmm. sentient world that we live in, which is the top picture, and then there's the unconscious world that we also live in, which is the mm -hmm. bottom picture. And that these two worlds exist at the same time, oftentimes, but, mm -hmm. but on two different planes. And I was thinking a lot about uh, Emily Dickinson the poet, she did a, a book of poems where um, she had one continuous stream of poem that went through the book, but then she also had these sort of improvisational poems that, that played in and out of that steady line of thinking. And um, so I wanted to c create that steady line by way of these portraits of Adriana sleeping the unconscious world with the sentient world above mm -hmm. that can sort of play in and out of that. Um, and this, the, the, the pictures above of, of the world are meant to allude to like all those identities and that chaos that is on the surface, you know. Mm -hmm. It's also playing with surface, which I continue to like play with surface and the wanting to mm -hmm. like, my pictures mm -hmm. are, do take place on the surface, but I hope that they point towards something below the surface. Yeah, definitely, know? yeah. Yeah, eventually. Um, uh, what do you I mean? I, I really love the seven kinds of loneliness. Yeah. Seven kinds yeah. of loneliness. So there was a book um, by Richard Yates called Revolutionary Road that mm -hmm. was influencing this work a lot. And uh, he had another book called Twelve Kinds of Loneliness. Um, so mm -hmm. I subtracted five because this was a, a portfolio that I did for Stanley Barker. And uh, again, it's a, it's a title that that is mostly just meant to point the reader, not necessarily describe, you know, the work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's meant to be evocative. Uh, phenomena of place, not the thing itself, but the effect of it. The effect of this kind of living. Interested in things that have been marginalized because they remind us, remind us of our mortality. Obscene, off the scene, observed but never spoken about. That's a quote from Lewis Baltz. But life's actually about a lot of spillage that we're trying to hide from ourselves and from other people. And then a, a, just a, a, a containing line, simple, clear, elemental, quiet, domestic, apolitical. These are just sort of ambitions for what the work will, could do, you know, like trying to place constraints on it, you know, bracket it. It's not going to be this, it's going to be this. I may, have taken, I may have taken the book, but, uh, well, the portfolio, but forget to bring it, so. You can skip that one. You can skip, skip. that one. Okay. So then the, um, the book that Mac did, uh, Supreme Honey Cathedral, uh, that was published in 2020, was sort of the bringing together of all of these elements that I had explored prior to the book. Um, and uh, maybe we can just show the pictures. Yeah.
now there's a mix of uh, color and black and white. These are the last picture. Um, yeah. I mean, these are two pictures that I probably wouldn't have put together, but somehow they allude to something bigger. I don't know. And, and uh, sequence has a lot to do with it too. What came before and what comes after it. You know, the placement of pictures, the way it's sort of building towards something. Oh, this is a quote, Derek Walcott. Ultimately, it's what Yates says. Such a sweetness flows into the breast that we laugh at everything and everything we look upon as blessed. That's always there. It's a benediction, a transference. It's gratitude, really. The more of that a poet keeps, the more genuine is nature. I've always felt that sense of gratitude. I've never felt equal to it in terms of my writing, but I've never felt that I was ever less than that. It's a brilliant quote. I mean, a lot of um, just looking at your life and photographing, you know, like seeing your and, and focusing on it and making a picture of it, that it feels like a, an exercise in gratitude, you know, you're, mm -hmm. because you're pointing at the thing that you find astonishing or love, and that's just like building this thing of like, wow, this is, this thing yeah, exists, sure. you know, and I get to be with it. And so it's sort of building that, that inner gratitude. And I think that creates sort of a, um, a, a cycle or, a, you know, mm -hmm that feeds back into the work. Yeah, so sometimes your pictures you just, just things just happen and I have to, to take them and it's just... Yeah. Uh, this one. It's a really lovely echo in that picture of like the, the wires and then like the V in their neck right here. Yeah. And then this is a piece of text that a friend of mine, a uh, friend of ours wrote specifically for this work. Um, actually, if we want to look at that Mac video, this is um, the yes. reading of it. Uh, yes, if I manage. Are there any questions while we're queuing this up? So this was a, um, my son came up and did like a shot a little video. It's like a little promotional video for the book. It kind of shows us and the reading of this text. If I tell you about our house, tell you so well that you can imagine yourself living in it, it will no longer be my house. It will be yours, and I will be nothing but its former resident, just as the person who lived in your actual house before you did is not even a thought for you. Where are you going, Sunday? See ya. Cartwheel. You will imagine me in rooms that belong to you, eating out of your refrigerator, sleeping in your bed. And in this way, I too will become yours. But if I keep the details of the house to myself, leave it as a bare sketch of a house, perhaps even make it an impossible house, a house that couldn't stand, a house you couldn't reconstruct from my description. 
a house whose rooms shift and twist and move and even vanish and reappear. Then you will be living in my house, the house as I actually remember it, and a house you could never make your own. Then you will have to trust me. In order to trust me, you will have to believe in me. I will stand on my own. That was better than my reading of it. Uh, so I meant her voice to read that. But it was totally by accident that she, because we got the piece of text and then um, I sent it to her and to Adriana and she got out of the shower one night and just laid in bed and just wanted to hear how it sounded. And so she recorded her voice reading mm -hmm. it and then shared it with me and I was like, this is, we got to use oh, this for something. It's really, yes, yeah, yeah, beautiful voice. <laughs> but again, like it's, it's a piece that's meant to be evocative, you know, it's meant to say the book could be about this, not necessarily about this, you know. Um, yes. could be about something else, you know, could mm -hmm. be about whatever it is that you want to bring to it as a viewer. Yes, I remember you said uh, one day that the, the, the pictures that you liked the most were the ones where, I mean, everything was not, I mean, you could choose, mm -hmm. uh, the viewer could choose one way or another in yeah. the picture. Uh, yeah, and the key thing, like in a book like this, is knowing which pictures not to include because to include a certain picture starts to, it starts to close down around a, a certain idea and then you eliminate the viewer. So it's, it's knowing which ones to exclude so that the viewer can enter in, you know. Yeah. You have to have those, those spaces. Uh, I mean, ultimately, you, you want the, I want the book to become more of a vessel, you know, that you can fill as opposed to yeah. a vessel yeah, yeah, yeah. of, you know, my thoughts and pictures. Hola, mi amiga. Hola. ¿Qué? Ya, hey. Eh, bueno, he visto en el libro que hace referencia a una canción de Nick Cave, Rings of Saturn. Eh, ¿Cómo te, cómo lo hilas con el, con tu obra esta canción o en qué te, te inspira o Sí, cuéntanos un poco. Gracias. Mm -hmm. um, it came, th that song I was listening to, actually I was driving to Adriana's house to have dinner, and, I was, and that song came, just randomly came up, and he's referencing in that song, the lines are, appear in the text, which we're going to look at here in a second. Uh, this is what she does, this is what she's meant to be, this is who she is, and this is what she does. And it just struck me as like this um, beautiful homage to an individual, she, um, that, yeah, this is it here, um, that could provide a sense of agency, that could provide, um, so many of the pictures in the book uh, suggest disorder and chaos a woman or a situation that's a little bit out of control. And I, and, but that line, those lines to me said that, no, this is by intention. This is what she's meant to be. This is what she is. This is what she does. So it was a way of saying that, it was a way of acknowledging to myself and to who's going to look at the book. It provides agency of saying like, this is by design. This isn't, these, these aren't things happening to this woman. This is a woman who's choosing to be vulnerable to the world and to allow the world, the messiness to come in, you know? So it's a deliberate choice. It's not just random acts happening, you know, to this person. So it was, it was sort of my way of, um, I don't know, giving back agency or empowering, becoming a more empowering story, you know? And I love Nick Cave. So it was like, it was, you know, to have like, yeah, you too, yeah. Yeah, it's like just to bring him into, you know, he actually yeah. got a copy of the book and wrote just to say how much, you know, so it was nice. Yeah. It was nice, yeah. yes. Yeah, but this, so yeah, this is the, 
This is another of the text collages that sort of this jumble of words and vernacular, like Adriana specific. She's from the South, from New Orleans, so she has a way of speaking that's very particular, that's very Southern. Um, and so this is like bringing together these words and making this collage again to collapse time. Um, elastic winter, dark bird barreling down, dust in the air, damp dust on the tongue, dry hours, rising, falling, drifting, joy-torn stitches, memory, rich memory, healed, awoken, tumbling house, broken, child, scribbled, wall-stained manual, too small to read. And this is the moment, this is exactly what she is born to be, unkind curve of soap, distant eggs turning, burnt butter, bad news barbecue sauce, don't let's go down the hall, and to the stairs, down the stairs, and into the water. Gray currents, silk robe, dripping shadows cross ceiling, shadows cross treetops, shadows crossing sky, ollie ollie oxen free, cold egg broken with a fork, tender fork, tender potted fern, striped mattress, portable heater, merry widow, sugar boo, full tilt boogie, blackbird barreling down, lost keys, salvation too small to read, Trees with pasted on leaves, mother of all questions, fistful of flowers, giant simple face of sea. And this is what she does, and this is what she's meant to be, and this is what she is, and this is what she does. So it's, yeah, it's just meant to like, just put it and stir it and like bring it out, dump it on, the, and then just start arranging words and hope that it can somehow convey uh, a feeling, you know. You mentioned vulnerability, uh, being vulnerable. Uh, well, maybe she is too, I don't know, but uh, your pictures, um, that they, they speak to me in this way. A vulnerability? I mean, vulnerability, yes. Yeah. I mean, there's this moment of some kind of grace because they're, they're beautiful, there's this mm -hmm. beautiful, delicate moment, mm -hmm. but everything could just uh, fall apart. But yeah. here it is at, at this moment, so. Yeah. Well, organized. I love, yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think that's what the best, you know, my favorite pictures do that. They, they take that uh, chaos and they, <laughs> you know, <laughs> organize it and distill it and yes, make it yes, something yes. beautiful. And this, so this will be the, the front and the back cover of the book where, the, where um, the designer, you know, laid out the poem in this structure, staircase structured, organized chaos way. to animate what we most consider, consider inert. And then sort of the one like Stephen Dunn quote that I find myself applying to just about everything I do. Oh, return to zero, the master said. Use what's lying around the house. Make it simple and sad. Oh, <laughs> so. <laughs> Hola. Eh, a ver si puedo preguntarlo de una forma ordenada. En, en todos los, los libros que has enseñado hay como una búsqueda de quién, es, quién, quién soy o como quién soy, ¿no? Hay, un, hay como una búsqueda de quién es la masculinidad, mascul, eh, la masculinidad en esos chicos que saltan americanos, ¿no? Quién es el hombre americano o el joven americano, quién es... Eh, tu pareja, quién es la casa. Eh, ¿Hay respuesta para eso o es un... ¿Cómo vas con esa respuesta? <risa> Porque luego te veo fotografiando en, en la cámara como escondido. Entonces, hay, hay una... Todo es muy espiritual, ¿no? Pero me ha, me ha chocado mucho esa escena con esa búsqueda de, 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 de quién es uno, ¿no? Eh, también has hablado de quién es uno cuando hablabas de que fotografiabas siempre tu casa de niño y es el, el, ¿no? Lo, la nostalgia. Bueno, un poco esa es, ¿no? Que, ¿Cómo va esa búsqueda? Uh, fortunately, it's ongoing because if it ever dries up, if it ever stops, I don't know what I'll do. Um, but I think it's also ongoing because the act of photographing for me is constantly 
this conversation or calibration between what's happening inside and what's happening out in the world. And those things are always changing. But invariably, the, you know, what I'm drawn to picturing and photographing are the, are the things that are familiar to me and still like a family me member that is familiar to you but ulti ultimately unknowable. You know, you, th you feel, like, feel like you should know this person because you, you grew up with them, but you know, then you find yourself in a conversation with them around you know, Christmas dinner and you realize like your experience of your childhood is completely different from theirs. So, um, so it's the unknowability ultimately, you know, like uh, I'll, I'll always be searching, not just for, a, it's not so much even a search for the past or understanding the past, it's really just a, a search for it's a search for, to sort of comprehend the world, your place in the world, and then to comprehend who you are <laughs> at the same time. I mean, it sounds, it sounds kind of big and ambitious, but it's, these are all just things that like put you out in the world and ex you know, expressing joy and gratitude at like the things that you get to witness with the camera. And, and composing is like, mm -hmm. you know, with the camera is like one of the most joyful things I can do. Like to see how, you know, these two things that you know, like, oh, this, I'm drawn to this and I'm drawn to this in the foreground. Mm -hmm. I want those two things in the picture. And you start moving and they start aligning and then you move like three inches to the left and it's like, that's it. You know, like, mm -hmm. that's the most joyful thing. I mean, I think of like a musician composing a score and like, can't find that note, can't find that note. Okay, there it is, I found the note, you know, and like writing it down, it's the same sort of joy. So that's a, a very long-winded answer to your question, I hope. <laughs> yeah, the quest is going well, it's, it's going well. Uh, a little more challenging here in France because I'm an American photographer. I mean, I, I identify with that with being an American photographer. Um, so I find myself in France looking for American landscapes, you know? Yeah, well, I was going to say that because I'm, I've been lucky to see you work a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, the places you photograph here, well, some, the ones I have seen, yeah. uh, they're just um, this in-between places, I mean, uh, mm -hmm at the border of, I mean, they're not homes, yeah. home in a large sense. I mean, you're yeah. not taking pictures of the beautiful landscapes we have. Yeah. Or maybe you are, but I haven't seen them. <laughs> uh, you, you're just uh, photographing, yes, these borders, um, mm -hmm. places, a bit no man's land. Uh, yeah. So maybe you're still uh, looking for what uh, Amy said. Uh, mm -hmm. Just, uh, yeah, I mean, that's, I it, it, it has to become intimate somehow, mm -hmm. like, and that's the only intimacy I have is to be able to, you know. Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, these pictures are just a few that I placed in. This was from last summer. And mm -hmm. thinking about contingency and, like, wanting my pictures, I was getting frustrated with landscapes because nothing ruptures that moment of, like, well, you know what the picture is going to be because you've composed it. And oftentimes when you compose a picture, you, you're drawn to something that's wild and then you start composing the picture and you realize now I've stripped it of its wildness. It's become too organized. You know, it's become too orderly and too mannered. How do I introduce, how do I send it back? Return it to the wilderness, you know, how do I make it wild again? How do, how do you introduce chance? So uh, some of these, like the, this picture, you actually see me like throw stuff into the landscape. But also what happened was this picture and maybe a couple, mm -hmm. uh, I got back from my journeys. I shot all this digitally and I accidentally deleted all of my files. Um, and I just totally panicked and thought they were gone. I did a little ceremony to like <laughs> get it out of my system. And then I read there was a software that might be able to recapture them which it sort of did, but when it did, it rebuilt a lot of them with yeah. these 
graphs, in these graph forms almost. So like it took the picture and <laughs> put it back together yeah. in its own... Uh, b build another landscape, a new landscape at the same time. Yeah, yeah they're new landscapes, yeah. So that was, this is sort of my way of also like introducing chance that happens, you know, whether you want it or not, like things happen, random things happen, and just embracing it, trying to make it work, trying to find the grace that could, that could be in it also. These are mostly in Southern California. Spent two years indoors, like most of you, during the pandemic, and last summer, I just realized I had become so disenchanted with our country, you know, and was sitting at home, watching the news, watching, you know, our president, you know, just throwing up on TV, it felt like. And um, I just decided I had to get out and, like, see the world and see people and meet people again, the people that were not what I consider to be my people because they voted differently than me, you know? But uh, just to get out and like be amongst them and, and, and become re-familiar and fall in love with, uh, like the geography in America is still like the most beautiful, for me like the most beautiful in the world. Like it's so diverse and so just to be out and like renew some of my hope and faith in mankind and in America. Mm -hmm. um, I wouldn't say I still have faith in America, but I, I still identify and love parts of it. Mm -hmm. So how do you feel in France now? Or in France, in Spain, um, in Europe, let's say. Mm -hmm. You yeah. feel much less the, Im the influence of capitalism here. No. You feel, it feels more like there's a, there's a greater sense of community here, where, they, where yeah. they're putting mm -hmm. the community, more of a socialist, I guess, agenda where they're putting mm -hmm, other mm -hmm. the, the greater common good before yeah. the individual good yeah. that's a that's a broad answer to a broad question yes <laughs> yes okay well, <laughs> in spain there's still uh, this family uh, feeling i think yeah more than in france but uh, family feeling yes i mean the family i mean it is changing, uh -huh. uh, but still, I think, yes, uh, huh. I don't know if you feel that, but uh, we are a big family here. <laughs> yeah, they're not fighting yet, that's good. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah and then the, the, the next body, we can just kind of quickly go through this, because we've been looking at a lot of pictures. Uh -huh. um, this was, I, I, I couldn't bring the actual physical object, but this was a, a, a portfolio that I made titled Winter Auction. Uh, the pictures came from m my partner Adriana's family farm was being auctioned in 2016 and we went to photograph it and um, it just felt like, again, like it has a lot to do with these things that we bring into our lives that end up controlling us, you know, end up taking over our lives. So this was like her family farm being auctioned and uh, these are farmers that come from all over the Midwest to, to bid on you know, millions of dollars of factory machinery. And it was on the coldest day in Ohio of, uh, of the year. And, um, and we ended up ultimately doing these pictures of these farm tools just being hurled into the air. This was her like catharsis of like letting go of the history, two generations of a family farm. So I was the one hurling <laughs> tools yeah. and things into the air and she was, she was taking them. the pictures. Yeah. Yeah. You're actually having a, an exhibition of this work. In San Francisco yes. right now. Yeah. In San Francisco. Yeah. Also. But this was a portfolio that I made separate of a book that we also did, um, in which I try to create uh, a, more of a dialogue between pictures to create sort of a short, brief narrative of what I witnessed during that time there, what it felt like. These were sheets that were in inches 13 by 18, and the pictures were mounted 
printed and mounted on mm -hmm. the boards. No, I don't have it, sorry. I wish I had, but... <laughs> I don't have it either. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we can talk a little bit about the objects that you make, or the, I mean, the artist books. Do you feel that? Mm -hmm. um, what specifically would you like to...? Oh. No, I mean, I don't know. Uh, can we show this, or no? Sure. Yeah. I'm not sure how. Uh, oh, this is a really beautiful from oh, Wright Morris. Uh -huh. Maybe I should... Yeah, yeah. Or maybe the interpreter can just read it. If you wouldn't mind, thank you. Is she reading it? Oh, I don't have a speaker, so I don't don't hear the translation. Okay. Does she read it? Estáis oyendo la traducción? Okay. It was red? No, I can't hear, so I don't know if she's translating. Yes, I guess, yes. No. Okay. Um, so, I'll, I mean, I'll, I can just talk, I guess you can point me in a more specific direction with it, but yeah. the artist books that I make, um, they're partially uh, all I was doing for, I mean, my living was made up of a little bit of teaching, a few exhibitions and selling a few prints, but mostly making mm -hmm. books and small editions okay, and, and then appealing to a small audience to sell the books. Um, Gabriella is one of them that I would appeal to regularly. Uh, and it's a way of sort of interacting with the work while it's being made before it becomes a trade book. But it's also a way of, um, of, Making, wow. an, making an object um, where the use of different materials, like I'm, I'm working with, with film here, it's a transparency film. I'm using a lot of repurposed papers from other books. I'm printing directly on paper. But all of this is, all of the work that I'm doing is a way of imbuing a certain quality on an object by way of attention, awareness, and handling. Like, you know, you, a trade book is is printed. It's it's printed and it's bound, but it doesn't have a lot of hand qualities to it. You know, it's not being handled. Um, so that's what that's what the artist books are meant to do. It's also a way of just interacting with the work while I'm making it and starting to understand what's working, what is speaking. Uh, it's proce using process as a, as a revelation, um, and. Uh, and then it also affords me to sell them and keep funding and doing what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I was telling Gabriella the other day, she was, I think she was looking for some like beautiful answer. She says like, well, you know, what happens when you, you make a book? It's like, essentially I, I'm out of money. I don't have any money. And it's like, yeah. I have to make something, you know? And so it's at that point where you just scoop out this section of work and you just lay it out. And it's like, what, it, what does this want to be? You know, what is it? What can I make of this? and you start to make something and then a title comes to you and the title mm -hmm. helps narrow it further. And you start like looking in your flat file drawers, I've got this paper, I've got this film, I've got this thing, and you just start like making from. And so there's an immediacy to it, partially because I'm out of money and partially because, um, because mm -hmm. uh, I, I like working quickly. I like not having to think about something too much and I like uh, not using traditional book binding precious materials, I like just Mm -hmm. using masking tape and, yeah. you know, like yes. spray paint and, you know, just like working quickly and making things that feel immediate and a little bit raw and where you re definitely feel the hand, you know, yeah. mm -hmm. and you feel the awareness yeah. in the hand on the object. And so um, that's a big part of like why I do. Uh, this book actually was a one of a kind book and I was experimenting with um, erasure, which was like, taking an existing, existing piece, piece of text and removing certain phrases to create a new, a new poetry. 
a new form. And then bringing in pictures that felt like once that form that was composed, what pictures now start to work in tandem with this, this new document. This is a small book, it was one of a kind, and, and I sold it to a collector and I haven't seen it since, but um, it's, a, it's a really wonderful way of working that I hope to return to eventually. <laughs> Yes, we were talking just a bit earlier about the idea of um, some pictures um, reappearing. I mean, uh, it's all a large, a longer circle of life. Mm -hmm. So you, you use, well, some of the pictures in, in several, uh, several yeah. books, yes. Yeah, I, um, mainly I just, I'm, I'm really drawn to the way context can wobble a little bit. You take a picture, and you put, it next, you put it in the context of a book and, and it conveys this meaning and then you take it out of that context and you place it in a different context and now it conveys something else. Um, but I also like returning, it's the circle. It's, return, yeah. it's returning yeah. to something that I've already done, re-examining it and thinking about how it, how it could work in this new context, in this new place. Mm -hmm. And also revisiting for myself, like this picture in particular is a tree in Montana where we lived that I photographed over the years and it, it's in so many different pictures and so many different books but it was sort of a bellwether it was sort of like mm -hmm. the tree the cottonwood that um, I came to sort of see everything else against like that tree the way that tree captured light and the way that tree captured the weather it was just the one constant um, mm -hmm. And so I like to revisit that tree also, like for myself. I want to spend mm -hmm. time with that picture again, you mm -hmm. know, so I just bring it in. Yeah, yes. That's all. I think that's all. That's the whole That's it. Uh, um, yeah, and this was, uh, this was uh, the other artist's book. This was Superintendent Cathedral before it was the mm -hmm. book that Mac published. Uh, and in this book, I printed on... I oftentimes will just go to a used bookstore and uh, I'll look for books that, like art books that have an image printed on one side and blank on the other, and then I'll buy that book, take it apart, take it home, and figure out how to print on that blank sheet um, and what it, and then having to, having to merge my sensibility with what already exists in the world in terms of the material and the way it was designed in terms of the size, this was the size of the book that I had taken apart and just start running paper through printers and adjusting and adjusting and like figuring out how to print it. And this paper is sort of a glossy paper so the image sits right on top and you could take your finger probably and scratch it away. But mm -hmm. So I, I sort of like that impermanence and that delicacy of material too. Um, but it's primarily just a way of merging with something that already exists as opposed to starting with a fresh sheet of inkjet paper that everybody else mm -hmm. is using, you know, and mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's, it's sort of more of a dance at that point. Mm -hmm. uh, will you continue to do this book, so? I, I, I don't, yeah, not, I don't know that I want to do like a small edition artist book, but I do mm -hmm. want to make one of a kind mm -hmm. books now, mm -hmm. yeah. But I, it's hard to say if I'm out of money again. Mm -hmm. and, <laughs> so if you're out of money, we're maybe lucky to, to see more books. Well, maybe not a good idea, but... Uh, yeah. <laughs> I hope I don't have to, but it, I would welcome it also. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, Questions? What, um, may you talk a little bit about the, uh, your next plan? I mean, you have had a, a, a price of foundation uh, with uh, Fondation Hermé mm -hmm. to do a job in France. Mm -hmm. So... You are a European man now. Mm, you're right, uh, with, my, with my perfect English. Yeah, <laughs> um, I, yeah I, don't, I don't yet know. I mean, it's no, still, no. I know the next yeah. step. I know I'm going to Calais. Mm -hmm. I know I'm going to make work there, but I don't know. That's all I know, and that's all I have to know for now. Mm -hmm. I know the next step. Mm -hmm. I kind of know what's starting to work and what is not working, mm -hmm. but I'm really relying on the work to to talk back and mm -hmm. sort of inform where it goes. Mm -hmm. It's been a lot of landscape so far, um, mm -hmm. but I, and I have to try to start doing some portraits when I'm up there. Mm -hmm. um, but I, otherwise I don't really know. But uh, I mean, one of the major reasons that I 
enjoy doing a trade edition book, like the one I did with Mac and yeah, Joe's Commune, was that aside from like the work now becoming accessible, instead of 20 books, it's yeah, 3,000 yeah. books, um, it's that I get to, the work is now out in the world and people start to communicate with me. Yeah. There's a dialogue yeah. now between people who yeah. have the book and myself where I start to understand what the book Yeah. Maybe what it's about, but also how it's being received. Mm -hmm. And that's, yeah. I mean, that's really important to know, like, how your book is mm. being yes, of course. understood. I mean, yes, or, yes. And yeah. your photography being seen and, and shared, of course. Yeah. I learned so much about both books mm -hmm. by having it out in the world and by people communicating back, like, because, mm -hmm. you know, if you know what the work is about when you send it out, then mm -hmm. it's like, it's done yes. and it's empty but it, <laughs> if you don't if I don't know then it that means it has a chance to be ambiguous and maybe continue to evolve over time yes. you know it can continue <laughs> to grow and expand and evolve oh, yeah. you know yeah it's good I mean I, I still don't know very much very well how I am attracted to uh, in, in your photograph so let's keep, keep, uh, yeah. keep working on that yes I can't help you at all yeah. with that uh -huh. <laughs> I'm just glad it. Okay. <laughs> I don't know what time is it. We have a question. One and a half. Yeah. You have questions? Eh, yes. Hola, buenos días. Yeah. Nah, simplemente quería saber si nos podía explicar un poquito más qué está haciendo ahora en Francia y si va a hacerlo luego alguna exhibición o algún formato de libro, etc. So, um, I, I was awarded, it's called the Immersion prize, so it's a, it's a residency in France every two years. Um, Foundation Cartier-Bresson sends a French photographer to America, and America sends a Fran an American photographer to France. So um, I'm here for that, to make work. Uh, that's set in Calais. Calais is sort of the backdrop of the refugee crisis. Um, the work can't imagine in any way be being political, but um, So I'm here to, to photograph for seven months and make, it'll become a book with Mac and then it'll be an exhibition at Cartier-Bresson and it'll be an exhibition at ICP in New York. I think they're 2022 in New York and 2023 in, in Paris. And then a book with Mac. Uh, so I have until September to, like, to complete the work and then an intense editing process and printmaking and all that. Uh, but. It, Yeah, really, it, it's, it's a difficult thing. I mean, I had to apply for this. I was nominated and then I had to apply for it. And halfway through the application, I was like, I don't really even want to photograph in France. Like, why am I? But, uh, but it was just too good of an opportunity. And I thought just because you don't want to do something isn't a reason not to do it, you know? Maybe it, you know, this, a door opens, you know, you have to decide, am I going to walk through this door? And it, this felt like, you know, a gift, and so I, I just walk through the door and I see where, you know, which next door opens. Hola. Hola. Eh, bueno, eh, como es el día del libro, quería preguntar un tema sobre eh, los libros que haces tú, ¿no? Eh, esos libros de artista y cómo luego los traspasas, cómo es el trabajo con la editorial a, a la de hacer un libro pues, eh, de una tirada mayor ¿no? que lo que es un libro de artista. Eh, porque has dicho antes que eran diferentes ¿no? los que tú has creado de los que luego uh -huh. se han editado. Entonces me interesa un poco ¿no? cómo es ese paso, si es fluido, cómo se trabaja ¿no? el pasar de un libro de artista a un libro editado por una editorial. Sí, los libros de artistas son menos pictures, pictures usually, so it might be 20 pictures. And there, it's less important that that book have a narrative component, that it sort of have a beginning, middle, and end. They're really more of a, um, a beautiful object, you know, like a, that object, you know, this object, above all else, I want, it, I want it to be beautiful and I want it to feel beautiful and I want it to be generous and to give like beauty. Whereas a book that I do with a publisher, maybe 60 pictures. And those 60 pictures are, do have more of a narrative component to them. And 
um, it's a much more rigorous process of, of using like language devices, like syntax and like repetition and pacing to like keep a narrative, keep, keep the reader from one page to the next, to the next, to the next, building this feeling or this idea and then like trying to keep it suspended for 60 pictures, you know, until you get to the end. And um, so it's a lot of using different, it's a much more rigorous editing process. And then the sequencing of a book is just, it's so labor intensive because it is this building of thing, you, you know, at a certain point, you can let the air out of it completely by putting a picture that either simplifies and resolves something or it just doesn't belong, you know? Like, so you have to, it's a, it's a really rigorous process of moving pictures in, moving pictures out, deciding which pictures are working, which say too much, you know, this picture speaks too clearly, you know? So you have to, it's a balance the whole way through. And it's a riddle, it's like a big puzzle. How do you, you know, you have to figure out. That's the primary, and then and then it's, um, I mean, one of the things I really love about working with a publisher, especially the publisher I work with, is that it gets better. Like, you know, it's like having an editor in a way, if you trust them, where, and it's also not seeing your hand in it as much. You get to like work with a designer and you, get, you get develop this relationship with a designer and you appreciate seeing her influence on the book too. And, I just always find the less I see of my own hand, the more I'll appreciate the book long term because you start to like see other people's involvement in the book and that kind of renews it. Yes, we haven't talked about uh, Somersault. Mm. Uh, maybe you don't want to talk about it. But it's <laughs> not, yeah, it's not here, yeah. yeah. The book is, yes, it's beautiful, but maybe the, the design, there's some decisions on, on the design that, mm -hmm. uh, that were from Mac. I mean, that's yeah, I, that's yeah I mean, that's, so, it's a really a joy when you, yeah. when you have to hand over the trust yeah. to somebody else, the control mm -hmm. to somebody else, and then it works out. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. That book we don't have here, I don't, is it upstairs maybe? Yes, yes. Okay, yeah, this is the latest book I did with Mac um, called Somersault. Mm -hmm. Sí, no, no se nos ha ocurrido traer los libros, pero bueno, los tenéis en la biblioteca. No todos los libros de artista que ha hecho, desgraciadamente, pero, uh, pero bueno, todos los otros. Uh, I think that all the trade books uh, we have it in the in the library. So, uh, uh -huh. Os invito a verlos. ¿no? Teníamos. Uh... Great. Thank you all okay. for coming. Thank you Thank very you. much. Thank you. Muchas gracias. Muchas gracias. Thank you.